Hey guys, it's SD. Uh, we're still out here working on this uh, mold for the uh, stator assembly for the uh, little mini wind generator I got from uh, Buddy Belgrade. This uh, stator works out good, then I can make him a couple of them and send them to him. Anyway, we've got the rotors on here. These are one inch diameter by half inch thick, 49 pound pull magnets. I had to uh, take a couple of washers and space them out right in through here to give myself a little bit of a gap here. I still might have to have one more washer. I got one inch here. So the uh, stator mold is going to be uh, set for three quarters of an inch. So once I get that set up on there, I might have to, like I say, get one more spacer. He had regular uh, steel bolts coming through here. So when I would spin the uh, uh, rotors, the magnets were attracted to the bolts, so I took and replaced these with stainless steel, and I have to cut them down to length here. But anyway, right now it spins pretty freely, as you can see. I don't have the bolts that connect each of these rotors together in there right now. I might not even really need to use them because the magnets attract and keep it pretty well stable. Uh, there's this other spacer that he's got in there that's got, uh, I went and picked up set screws for that, and that's in. Plus this nut compresses it, uh, the rotors to, against each other. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, mold assembly. I've got, these are uh, 24 inch by 24 inch pieces of uh, uh, Formica casted uh, particle board. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's pretty cheap, usually in their scrap section. And I laid out the uh, cardboard template that I had made and showed you in previous videos right here. These are the stator. Uh, mounts that are on on the uh, uh, frame set up over there okay and this is the exact same size uh, bolt that's on there now okay and I have a nut and a washer on the back side of this so when I get ready to pour the mold all you do is take automotive wax and you coat all these surfaces and this edge and there'll be a, another piece of wood in here in the center uh, to uh, keep the magnets all aligned and that represents where the bolt hole pattern is going to be. But all this gets uh, waxed with automotive wax on these here, all these down through here. Uh, that way when you pour the resin on there, it doesn't uh, bond to it and you can back these bolts right out. Now these are knurled nuts that uh, each of the phases will be soldered onto these. And then I'll run these bolts up. I took a little straight edge and laid it across here so it represented uh, the top height of this piece of wood here and I can uh, run these bolts up and down to bring these nuts up or down so they're right at the very top uh, already so you don't have to sand a whole lot to get the uh, coating off of these but you can you can thread them up and down to raise and lower them no problem at all from the bottom okay so this will this will represent the uh, end phase this will be the start phase over here now a lot of guys I see all they have is this three connections showing on their uh, the stator mold. Okay, so they're whatever they've got set up in there, they're pretty much stuck with either star or delta, however they've wired up the, uh, the start. Okay, with this one here, these will be exposed so I can either wire it in star or delta doing it this way. Okay, now once this is all set up, all I do is take the top after I poured the uh, casting solution in there with the coils and take this top and those holes on that one are slightly a little bit bigger than what these are so they'll slide right down on there and then all I do is just sit here and screw the top down and let the uh, stator uh, cure up got a little bit of sniffles here but that's gonna the next little thing I'm working on just getting this all perfected still got to make like I say the centerpiece that goes right in here and then all I start doing is lining up the coal quills and go around again these bolts can't be in the way now what I did is I, I slightly elongated around each of these bolt holes and uh, it gives it a little bit more surface area because if you look as you come around this radius here it's right by where that bolt at, is at. So if you try to put a bolt through the uh, fiberglass resin right there and tighten it up it's not going to have a lot of holes so I'm going to you know cup this out a little bit and I'll put fiberglass mesh down here after I poured a little solution in there put the coils in put another fiberglass mat down over to cover the coils and pour my last little bit of solution over it and that'll give it a little bit more strength around each of these little uh, bolts so uh, I have a halfway decent hole you don't want to tighten up these bolts 
holding the uh, stator down a whole lot just to get them to where they're lined up perfectly I have to another I have to have one more uh, nut on on here when I have it adjusted here and here so it traps the spacer in there and you can adjust it one way or another you can get it lined up just right but it's coming along she spins it pretty good I've got a set of the uh, seven blade Raptor setup that I took off of the Missouri wind and solar that I can put on here if that doesn't spin it up uh, real good and then I'll get another set of the uh, Falcon blades the five blade set and put on there but that'll be a ongoing project the next little video will be uh, actually uh, getting the coil set up uh, they'll be all soldered together sitting in here with the centerpiece You'll see that and then probably uh, actually go ahead and pour the uh, compound in there with everything ready to uh, cure up. Then we'll show you the finished stator and get it assembled. On the back of the uh, wind generator, back on this back side, I still got to put the metal on there that's going to have the, uh, uh, that's called the vein, and then I'll have the tail on the back of it. Depending on uh, what blades I use, the diameter of the blades is going to dictate how long the vein needs to be and also how many uh, square inches are on the tail because that uh, keeps your uh, wind generator blades facing into the wind uh, if the blades are bigger than the tail and length of the vein your uh, blades will turn parallel to the wind and it won't be uh, doing you any good at all uh, this one won't have the uh, means to uh, furl out of the uh, wind I'll have to come up with another little setup later on. I just want to get this up and running, see how it works. And if the stator works, then I can make another stator and get it set off to my buddy Belgrade. That's been gee, almost a year now. I'm glad he's waiting, but I didn't want him to have to wait that long. Okay, well, we'll get to the next part. A little bit more work, and we'll show you how it goes. All right, we'll see you later. There you go, it's just the, I went ahead and taped the coils together and set them down in here. Tolerances are really tight. Uh, it's going to be interesting trying to run the uh, wires to hook each of the coils up in their proper phase. And then coming back up to the uh, start and then the end uh, terminals. Uh, I just wanted to see what kind of uh, room I had to work with. It's really tight, but I got the biggest possible coils I can get in here with these magnets. To get the most output so we'll see how it goes uh, next part we'll be getting the uh, uh, connections all wired up and soldered together and uh, start pouring the stator so like I say it's, it's uh, definitely tight tolerances so we'll see how it goes we'll catch you later on guys all right bye, -bye.